Well, welcome everyone. It's October 18th, uh, the meeting of the Faculty Senate, our full session. And there's refreshments in the hallway. There's donuts and coffee, ice water, and uh, maybe some all else. That's uh, hopefully you'll stay for a gathering afterwards. It'll be right outside with the same same uh, snacks there. And uh, Maria and Kelly have asked that you check in. You don't don't do it now, but before you leave at the end of the, the session, we're expecting to go until four o'clock. So. Uh, this is the plan. We have uh, President Ryan for up to 30 minutes, and then uh, Michael will give his report, and then uh, uh, Provost Balkum will speak next, and then we'll be back into the agenda. So thank you for being here live, and thanks for everyone who's in the hybrid uh, Zoom session. Anything else, Maria, I need to share? Thank you very much, President Ryan. Yeah. Very happy to have you here. Yeah. Thank you. Um, hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, hi. Um, so I will be brief because um, I want to leave plenty of time for questions. We have half an hour, you said, Jim? As much as you give us. Okay. Half, um, half careful what you ask for. Uh, so uh, Jim asked me to provide an update on a couple of um, reviews, um, one being around May 4th and then um, the investigation into the health system, just to give an update on where things stand. Um, so we are going to do a review um, of May 4th. Um, I have wanted to do a review since May 5th. Um, it has taken far longer than it should to organize the review. I will tell you that there have been false starts and disagreements about how to structure the review. Um, but I feel like we are getting very close to being able to announce when the review will start and who will be leading. Uh, that should be settled in the next couple of weeks. Um, I'm, I'm sorry that it has taken this long, believe me, um, and I appreciate your patience. Um, but there will be a review of everything that led up to it, decisions that were made by UVA, um, how it could have ended differently, um, and more recommendations for what we could do um, differently going forward um, next time. So it, it will be a review that will, will result in a report that will be um, shared with the university. Um, with respect to the, um, <laughs> it's a little distracting. Um, <laughs> I've never seen myself staring over my own shoulder. Um, with respect to the investigation into the health system, um, that is ongoing. Um, I'm not entirely sure how long it will take. Um, that is being led by um, Rachel Sheridan and um, uh Porter Wilkinson, who are the chair and co-chair of the audit committee. Um, it is also, I mean, the actual investigation is being done by um, a legal team from Williams and Connell. Um, I am staying out of it entirely. I don't want anyone to think even for a second that I'm trying to influence um, the outcome. Um, I, I think um, Rachel and Porter have a statement to read. Okay. Um, I also know that a number of you are concerned about what can be shared from this, and I've talked to Porter um, and Rachel a lot about this. Um, I can tell you they don't want to overpromise because they're not sure what's going to turn up, what can be released if it involves personnel or if it involves, involves other privacy um, concerns, um, but they and I share the desire to share what we can when we can. Um, and, uh, and again, I'm not entirely sure um, how long um, it's going to take. I will also say, because I know that this has been an issue, so one of the reasons why I am not involved in this at all um, is because I think some people were upset by the letter I wrote to the medical school faculty. Some faculty were really glad I wrote it, like a lot of issues in the university. Um, some faculty feel one way, other faculty feel the other way. Um, for those who are upset about it, um, I apologize. Um, I, the point of the letter was to make it clear that we were not going to summarily fire Craig and Molina based on that letter, and that we at least needed to give them due process and investigate what the allegations were. Um, maybe I became too aggressive. Um, sometimes the lawyer in me comes out and someone said, I, I rarely see you angry, but you seemed angry. Um, I will tell you it's much easier for me to deal with criticisms that are aimed at me than aimed at my colleagues. 
Um, and so I do feel more protective of my colleagues than I do of myself. If you're in a job like this, you're used to criticism. Um, I, it's not like I love it, but um, it, you, you develop thick skin. I don't have enough, I don't have thick skin with respect to um, my colleagues. At the same time, if you're the president of a university, your fiduciary duty is to the university and the allegations that were made in that letter are serious. Um, they need to be investigated. And I wanna make sure that it's a full and fair investigation. As I also said in the letter, but to make sure there's no confusion at all, I am not involved in the gathering of the information or the analysis of the information. Um, again, I don't know how long it will take, I would encourage this body to encourage the faculty, regardless of their views, because I can tell you the views are wide ranging across the health system, regardless of their views, um, to participate in that. Um, and then one last thing, since we're on the topic um, of reviews, um, we have been holding on to the external review of the shooting um, for a long time. Um, and that too, if I could wave a magic wand, um, would have been out uh, as soon as it was ready, which is over a year ago. Um, we found out from talking to the prosecuting attorney that there was some risk if that report were released to the public, it would interfere with the criminal prosecution. I don't think the odds of that are, are really high, but they're real. Um, and so we decided, well, we'll wait until the criminal prosecution is finished until we release the report. Um, the criminal prosecution is not finished. Um, I'm hopeful that it will before too long, um, but we will release the report when the criminal prosecution um, is finished. Um, so um, last uh, but not least, or maybe least, um, depending on your view of receptions, um, there will be a reception at Cars Hill next Wednesday at five, where the, the faculty senate is invited and the university leadership will participate as well. Um, and I hope you'll be able to join us there. So happy to take any questions. Yeah. So as you know, uh, the Senate asked or requested that the review for May 4th be both independent and external. Can you tell us to what extent the review that you have planned is either independent or external? Working on both. Yeah. Um, we're close to the finish line of getting there. I think you'll be pleased. Um, but I, I don't want to get ahead of this. Um, and we're, we're talking with someone now. Uh, so uh, I'll know more in a week or two. I wish I could have known. I, I tried to find out the answer before this meeting so I could say it's it's finally settled. Trust me, I have been trying to get this launched for a long time, and it's been difficult. Um, but I have not lost a commitment to having it done. Yeah. Just to follow up on that, can you explain a little bit what you think the optimal role for the senator being in the Senate Well, um, you've already played a role, which I think is important, um, which is calling for a review. Um, I think that's a, I think that's a critical part of it. Um, if there are individual senators who have information to share, um, that's also a crucial part of it. Um, but I also think that there will be a set of recommendations um, from the report. And in some respects, that that's, I think, going to be among the more valuable pieces of the report. I would hope and expect that the Faculty Senate will have a conversation about those recommendations um, and a conversation where you might endorse some, you might say that others are unrealistic, and you might say they've missed some. Um, you know, it's a report. It's not a, it's not a mandate. So it's a set of ideas and for them to be implemented requires action on the part of those of us who are at the university. And so I think hearing from the faculty senate about what ones you think actually make the most sense or whether ones that are, aren't in there that ought to be in there is, a, is an important part of it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. <laughs> um, 
So with regard to the the review of the events of, of the tragic events of November Brian, can you speak up, please? Oh yeah, I was just saying that that thinking about the the report of the tragic events of November twenty twenty two. Um, I guess there were some trade offs. Um, as we wait, there are certainly students and parents and others who are wondering about their security and grounds and 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 that. And faculty who are concerned about the same things about the well being of students and so forth. Is, is there a way that um, some kinds of assurances? I know this is a difficult line to walk, so as you mentioned, so is the question of releasing the report. Yeah. Are there ways that, that your office and you can give some assurances to parents and students and others that we're not just waiting? That, yeah, yeah, modifications are being made, yeah. that we've learned, that we're doing some things, yeah. but obviously, you know, I, mean, I understand that. There's many things the institution might not want to concede before the yeah. proceedings are completed. Can you talk a little bit about how we can together navigate the uncertainty around it? Yeah. So um, you may not have been following this as closely as some others, mm -hmm. but um, from the very beginning, we said we are not going to wait until there is a report to address some safety gaps that we can see. Um, and so we have been working on that uh, for well over a year. So one of the things that we did, we realized that we were getting um, uh, a lot more volume uh, uh, for the threat assessment team. So this is a team that's made up of um, a number of um, staff and some faculty who assess threatening behavior. Um, which is sometimes the you know the front line of this. Um, so we added staff to that group. Student Affairs has also reorganized itself um, to have teams that are focused on the care and well-being of students. So students who might be in crisis, and then students who are facing discipline. Um, feeling like that would be a much better way to deal with students who actually need some help rather than having the same person who might be involved in discipline be involved in that. Um, we've also increased the number of um, uh, ambassadors and their patrolling um, and done, done a number of other things that are, are designed to enhance safety. Um, so, you know, we did that because we, I had no idea that the report would be delayed this long. I mean, I thought once it was done, it would be out. It was a little bit of a surprise to find out, you know, that oh, this might interfere with the criminal prosecution because that wasn't raised earlier. Um, but we knew that it would take a while for the for the review to happen. And it makes no sense if we think there are needs right now not, not to do them. So um, I'm sure you could get J.J. Davis to come and talk about every single thing that's happened, but there's been a lot that we've added because of that. And, and not just, I mean, that's a, unusual, very unusual situation, um, but general concerns about safety go beyond that. And so some of the some of the measures we've taken have been just to enhance safety general. Yeah. On behalf of the, the school of medicine faculty, the concerns they've raised, uh, I first became aware of them this calendar year, but January concerns were raised before that. There's a perception amongst some that it took until the public left to get things moving. Um, could you talk about what you and others at the administration level did yeah. uh, as when those allegations were raised and along the pathway? Yeah. So here I want to hesitate um, because I don't. This is exactly what the investigation is covering too, which is another reason why I don't want to be um, involved in it. So I don't want to say too much because it it's, will seem like I'm trying to influence. I will say that there were concerns that Ian and others um, at university leadership that were brought to them um, that they addressed or were addressing. But Ian can elaborate, but I think you know, this is one of those situations where if you decide that you're going to have an independent investigation, you need to be investigation to go its course and not do or say anything that's going to seem like you're trying to push it in one direction or you're trying to color what the narrative is. As, as difficult as that is, I have many opinions about this. 
Um, and as difficult as it is to stay quiet, I respect the fact that this deserves an independent investigation, which means being quiet in the face of some things that keep cropping up, including articles in the Daily Progress. Um, but I respect the investigation. Yeah. Yeah. Speaking of Daily Progress, this is yet Thursday's paper, which you've probably seen. And the profits over patients, and it's got a picture of the leadership. Yeah. And I'm wondering, what, how are you responding to this kind of statement from the press? We're not. You analyze to determine the uh, accuracy. <laughs> is it published in the Daily Progress? Yeah, that's all I need to know to assess its accuracy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Shifting back to the uh, shooting of the investigation, one of the responses from your office after that was to go to the General Assembly, completely push to change some of the laws that were originally yeah. impeding our ability to respond to that. Yeah. My understanding was that those laws did not pass that session. Are, I know the session's not till January. Are you thinking of pushing on those again? Are there other things that you know about your legislative priorities? Yeah, that? yeah, that's, I'm glad you raised that. Um, so, um, one of the things that we have done twice now is um, push legislation that would close a loophole um, in uh, a, a, a firearm statute. So there is a statute in Virginia that prohibits um, the possession of firearms in any building owned by the Commonwealth with the sole exception of university buildings, which is a unusual and slightly hard to understand loophole. My understanding is that towards the end of the process when this bill was passed, people raised ROTC um, and VMI as potentially um, having trouble with the legislation. Instead of carving out an exception for ROTC or even VMI, they just exempted higher education altogether. Um, our um, uh, chief of university police, Tim Longo, um, is really eager to see this changed for the simple reason that right now the university police cannot search a student's room, even if they suspect that there is a firearm in there, because it doesn't violate the law. Um, it violates university policy, but the people who can investigate violations of university policy are student affairs people. Um, that's not a great situation. I mean, regardless of what you feel about firearms, um, having student affairs people be the ones who have to follow up on whether someone might have a gun in their dorm room is, I don't think, is an ideal situation. So we have been pushing to close that loophole so that the possession of firearms in a university building, just like the possession of firearms in the General Assembly building or in the executive building, would also be unlawful. Um, the first year it didn't make it out of the General Assembly. Last year it did, but it was vetoed. Um, the veto message talked about the fact that um, it might not work to have a single rule across the Commonwealth because of different cultural traditions with respect to firearms. Um, so we are going to try again. Um, and this time we're trying to see if we can craft the legislation um, that would either allow local control. So this would be a law that localities mean, in this case, universities could opt into. So if there are some institutions that think this doesn't fit with our culture, that act that way, or a law that applies everywhere, but you could apply for a waiver so that there is some flexibility. I don't know whether any university would decide to opt out, given that every college and university in Virginia has a policy prohibiting firearms already. So it's not like they're, if their culture is everyone should have a firearm or it's fine to have firearms in universities, that's not evident from the policies across Virginia, which again, are uniform. We'll keep going as long as I'm president um, and who knows how long it will take, um, but this one doesn't seem hard to me. Yeah. Um, can you comment on protests this um, semester? How have the new policies worked? Have, you, have there been a lot of protests? Have they been 
Peaceful seems to have profile college, etc. Right? There have not been many. Um, uh, there were two vigils during the week of October seventh. Um, uh, they were vigils, not protests. Um, there was a protest um, outside of Madison Hall last week, I think. Last Wednesday. Um, last Wednesday. Um, that was relatively small and short lived. Um, I've been surprised, honestly. I mean, I've been surprised across higher education as well. There, there have not been, there have been sporadic protests, but nothing um, like what happened in the spring. I don't, I don't know the reason for that. I don't know if it will continue or not. Um, but one of the things to, to realize about last year, I mean, May 4th got a lot of attention, not surprisingly. It was, in, it was incredibly traumatic. Um, but there were a lot of protests last year. Um, that happened all year long, that happened largely in, in cooperation with student affairs, um, where students who wanted to do a protest came to student affairs and learned where can it happen, what are the rules about how long it can be, can you have amplified sound and the like. Um, and those protests went on. Um, that has not been, that has, for whatever reason, that has not been the case this year. Yeah. Yeah. Um, can we be home? Which one committee is related to May 4th? Um, I'd love to challenge her. Can you speak up, Maria? Yeah. Sorry, I'm trying to. I think she's asking are participants who were included in the May 4th violence also on the committee? Um, unless participants in the violence against members of the community in town are included or not be one that is considered viable or neutral. Yeah. So um, there is no committee yet, um, but the review of that will obviously offer opportunities for especially those who were involved, um, as well as those who were witnesses um, to participate. Other, I mean, otherwise it doesn't make any sense. I mean, they're the ones who have a lot of the information, but it's a little bit like the investigation that's going on in the health system, which is why it's so important if people have information to share it, because the investigation or the review is only going to be as useful and as credible as the information that's provided to the person who's doing the investigation or the review. Yeah. Uh, I see that you don't respect the daily progress. I, I know it's a regional chief. But I think there's a sentiment amongst faculty, my name is Ian Mullins, I represent the general faculty, I'm the chair of the general faculty council, uh, that their concerns are not being listened to at the university level. At the the daily level. progress is concerns? The concerns with the review, for general faculty, our big issue this year is pay and professional development and advancement, right? Uh, people feel like they're screaming into a void, and so they might go to somewhere like the daily progress because they'll listen. Yeah. So, but if you don't listen to them going to the daily progress as a workaround to voice their concerns, like how can a faculty member express their concerns to you? Yeah. You hear it. So, um, a couple of things. One, the, the that daily progress article completely overlaps with the investigation into the health system. There's already an investigation and a mechanism by which faculty can participate in that investigation. Um, with respect to the concerns you're raising. No one has reached out to my office um, to have a meeting about those concerns. I, I try as best I can to be open to people who want to bring concerns to me. Sometimes I'll, I will point them to the person who's in charge. Um, but I try not to block off anyone from raising a concern. Um, and I'm mostly kidding about the daily progress. I mean, I, I do think that they love to poke at UVA. Um, and that's obvious, um, but I'm not, I mean, it, it's, it's mostly a good hearted joke. Yeah. Uh, Keenan Young, uh, School of Medicine. About the daily progress, there was a totally separate article over the weekend about a UVA librarian. And in it, she talks about letters of counseling and that policy affects all faculty. But some of the quotes is, you can say it's not disciplinary action at all, uh, but it's clearly an attempt to chill the character is insubordination, not listening to authorities. And, you know, that is a state of the university policy. There's letters of counseling, there's disciplinary action, there's a difference between the two. Yeah. And, you know, 
my question is, is when in your administration's view does does the wording of that, if it reads like a castigation or an excoriation of somebody, you know, when does that cross the line and is counsel? And you know, as a Senate, we're charged with advising you on all actions affecting faculty. Yeah. And this is a, a broad issue in fact, school of medicine. It clearly affects this life. Right yeah, now. yeah. We can say whether or not the daily progress reports accurately, yeah. but I, I think there's some legitimacy. So it's it, it's interesting that you raise that. Um, and I don't know if this is in the purview of the faculty senate, but I do know that the existing policy is explicit that I'm not going to comment on a particular case, but just the issue of this letter of counsel count as discipline. It, it, the reason it's interesting you raise it is because I raise it, and I said, well, this seems sort of like an, a a semantic argument, um, and you know, a sort of philosophical argument of what counts as discipline. Sort of like if if the next time you're more likely to be punished because you had the letter, is that first letter disciplinary or not? Um, I, I don't have a strong view. I mean, the current policy says it's not disciplinary. I think people could disagree with that. If someone wanted to revisit or the faculty senate wanted to revisit and say, I think letters of counseling should count as discipline. I don't know what other downstream effects that might have, um, but I wouldn't be able to stand here and say, um, as a matter of truth with a capital T, it's obvious, um, just like it's obvious that the wall is green, that a letter of counseling could never, under any circumstances, constitute discipline. Under our current policy, that's how it's defined. But if that wanted to, if, if there were enough interest in revisiting that, but maybe that's, I, I have no idea whether, oh my gosh, the whole edifice would collapse and it wouldn't make any sense if yeah. that were the case. My concern is just when something is so strongly worded or it comes out and says, you violated this with, a, you know, with zero investigation or due process, you know, when does that become, you know, you put it in somebody's file, when does that become something more than counseling? And so I guess that's where I just sort of wait, raise it broadly at the university level. You know, is that something we need to look at to clarify? That? Yeah, I can jump in. And I think it's a great question, Keenan. And as we're looking at the entire, um, the existing policy on faculty discipline, as you know, one of the major tasks for the year, working with the faculty senate, working with the deans, working with the full faculty community, um, it is to take another look at that. And that includes really um, getting a sense of what is disciplinary, what is not disciplinary. So I think my team is going to be talking about it today. But we've been working on some drafts to share with the policy committee here. So there is, there is an avenue now for the Senate to really respond very specifically to that question. Um, as we think about, we know that we need to revise the policy. Over, and this is one of the questions in the minute. So I think it's a welcome question and something that we will have a chance to take up with you together over the course of the next couple of weeks. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I, I saw a letter that concerned the School of Medicine faculty who uh, issued the complaint letter uh, that related to um, some mistrust of Williams and Conley and the uh, the uh, sort of retaining of their own counsel. And I think the issue is about, you know, whether or not the university would help pay for that. Yeah. And I, I was really unclear about is the, does the attorney general make that decision about us funding uh, the School of Medicine or do we at the university make our own independent uh, decision about whether or not we're going to help defray the cost of that uh, of that independent council to assist those school of medicine faculty in the ways only. Yeah. So um, I'll tell you what my past practice has been. Um, so anytime the university hires outside counsel, for whatever reason, it has to go through the attorney general. Um, so the attorney general has to approve the appointment of outside counsel. Um, with respect to representation within this kind of review, this, is, this has come up before, and it came up in the context of um, the external review around the shooting, um, because the external reviewers obviously talked to a bunch of people at UVA who were nervous um, about the review. Um, the decision was made for a, a number of reasons um, not to have counsel um, in the room during the interview. 
but to hire counsel who could talk to the group of people who are going to be interviewed and basically give them advice, let them understand, like, here's what the process is going to look like. Here's what the questions are going to look like. If there are any risks to you, here's what they might be. Um, and as far as I know, that's what's been proposed here. I don't know. I, I think it's been rejected. But that's what we've done in the past. But if there were to be any council appointed, yeah, it would have to be approved by the Yeah. There's a proposal being considered. Uh, I missed today. the first part. There's a proposal being considered today, a resolution on the School of Medicine. One of the provisions says, encourages the investigation to also include review of all allegations of efforts to silence school of medicine faculty complaints and delay awareness of institutional climate concerns. Would you agree with that? I mean, the allegation or the investigation? Uh, the investigation? Investigation to include a review of all allegations of efforts to silence school medicine faculty complaints and delay awareness of institutional climate concerns. Um, yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think you need to take a broad view of um, what counts as efforts to silence. So as long as the view is going to include, regardless of your views, has someone tried to silence you? Sure. Yeah. More of a comment than a question. Um, so in the discussions around the resolution that's going to be um, the school medicine resolution that will come out today, um, there was a feeling that, as kind of what Michael was alluding to, that um, upper administration knew about issues and kept them quiet and did not share them with executive Committee or with the Senate broader. And I guess the comment is we hope to be in partnership. Yeah. And partnership means understanding negative things as well and difficult challenges. And if we only hear about the good things, the grand challenges, the new buildings, and things like that, then we aren't partners, we're constituents because you're trying to convince us that things are going well. Right. And so we want to be partners. Yeah and hear about challenges and help provide advice on challenges as well as um, Yeah, I absolutely agree. Um, so actually one of the things I was going to propose, um, you know, I last year we, the faculty senate came to Cartel, Michael's suggestion. Um, and what I said there, and I still believe, um, is I really value the faculty senate and feel like um, there has been a good relationship between the faculty senate and the university leadership during my time here, which is not always typical in universities. Um, and I am still grateful for the faculty senate, but I feel like we're a little out of sync. Um, and so what I would like to do, if you'll have me, is come to every faculty senate meeting and spend the first half hour taking questions. So if there are concerns that you feel like no one's hearing, that will be the time and you can ask your colleagues if they have questions. But if that, I, I think that would help get back into sync because I do view all of you as partner. Sometimes there's information that is related to personnel that can't be shared. Um, and so, you know, it's, it, we can't bring every single thing that we're dealing with, but you're right. I mean, this should not be a place where, um, you know, we come in and just talk about rainbows and unicorns. Yeah. Jason Drusgill, School of Medicine. Um, as, the, as the investigation proceeds, is there any mechanism where information that's found that's thought to be significant might be shared with you before the final report is available? Because we've we've talked about two other things, May 4th and the shooting, where we're doing things while investigations are happening. And, and these, since we have an open-ended timeline, yeah. when the School of Medicine report even come out. Yeah, so it, I'm glad you asked that because I just asked that question today about whether I can get regular updates, which I would like to do because you're right. I mean, there may be some things that we need to start addressing right away or that we could address right away. And there are some things that's on that. So obviously we want to follow the investigation. Jim and I do need to kind of hold ourselves independent because I think the very important question of or we, uh, let me say me, because I play my role appropriately as one that someone outside would be able to come in and comment on, so I, I, I fully respect that. But there are issues that um, have been raised that we need to be in and will be working on, so very broadly promotion and tenure process, um, and how we have consistency, how we have objectivity, um, to ensure that there is um, not any misalignment between promotion and tenure, 
um, or disciplinary or other potentially retaliatory behavior. So that's a process that preceded this um, that is well underway that we will continue to take a look at. And that's not going to, we're not going to put it um, the Colleagues in the School of Medicine, the use of the Aspire values um, is a conversation um, or sort of values within the School of Medicine um, that are indexed um, into currently into the promotion and tenure process. That's something that over the course of this past year, um, we became aware of that we really needed to, let me just say, um, have a much deeper conversation uh, with leadership in the School of Medicine. That conversation uh, is already underway. Um, what the nature of disciplinary policy is, um, this, this broader policy. So all of those things. Um, some of the issues and the sort of implicit Jim and the um, one of the resolution pieces, both about um, absolutely no one should be silenced. And then there are also sort of questions about climate culture. We were um, right at the point before the letter came out of doing a school wide survey to try to get to some deep sense of those issues. It seemed appropriate to put that on hold because the external body is in. Um, we will need to understand from the results of the investigation what the climate issues are, um, who the appropriate body is to look into them. So some of them will be able to come on right away. Some of them, I think that the sort of the depth of the investigation and the, and the extent of its scope um, might slow down a little bit um, because we need, we need to kind of have that fact basis. But some of those very broad things, promotion and tenure, use of aspire values, um, the um, way in which um, processes of hiring um, across the school right away. Those are things that we, we can um, work on uh, and we'll be working on. Yeah, I mean, and even the article that you mentioned, um, who knows if what the accuracy level is of it, but if that's happening, other universities have gotten pretty big fines from CMS for that sort of thing. I mean, that seems like something you'd want to get on early. Yes. <clears throat> Just one over there. On the same, on the same kind of no. Um, uh, we really appreciate that you have this investigation. This is a big concern that this investigation is protecting the leadership of UVA School of Medicine and not protecting the faculty. So that's a, that's a very big concern I share, and I know many of my colleagues do. So instead of being viewed as a independent UVA investigation, is a lawyer firm that was um, designated to protect them, and the investigation is against faculty. So how, what's your, what, what do you respond to that? And what is your plan to protect faculty? What if these allegations are true and this type of, you know, behavior continues? How do you protect faculty? Can you so, tell us more about that? Um, I'm not sure whether you mean to protect faculty during the investigation or after. So if, I, if these allegations are true, yeah. right, what is it done now to protect people that are in those situations where their promotion is stopped, their you know, their uh demon or demonish or whatever if they you know, this is happening right now. Right. It's not happening a year from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Education report is going to come. So, I, so I, I appreciate the concern. I think what's been set up, and if I'm wrong, but also tell me, you know, what would actually make faculty feel more comfortable participating um, is that anyone who is concerned about retaliation can speak with the head of audit um, who reports to the board, not to the university leadership. Um, so we set that up for precisely, or that Rachel and Porter set it up precisely, so that faculty who are worried about participating or 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 feel like they're getting retaliated, which should not happen, have a place in independent, an independent place to report it to. Was that made aware? Like, where was faculty made aware? Was that the you know, letter sent to the general faculty from school of medicine? I forget how it was communicated. The, the rector shared that information, I think, about 10 days to two weeks ago. The rector of the Board of Visitors shared it directly, uh, I believe, roughly within that time frame. Can we send it again? <laughs> and ask them, and I'm not sure whether it might or might not be, and I know that we're going to be hearing from Michael um, some comments from the two board members who uh, chair. Um, okay, but we can... And we're trying very appropriately not to correct it, but in terms of if there's communication that's helpful, um, Morgan, maybe if you can just help us um, think about a, a kind of recirculation. 
question for the call up. Yeah. Sorry, the same point. To the concern that medical school faculty have advised the council in order just to participate in the investigation, which makes me very sad to hear that they truly feel what they need. Um, you said something like, if you have this model from the earlier investigation of having counsel to give advice to employees who are being asked to give information, yeah. we made that proposal, it was rejected. Was it rejected by the attorney general or by who was that proposal rejected or provided counsel? I could be wrong, but I thought it was rejected by the faculty. So it's presented to some body the faculty? Or Again, I have not been involved in this, so okay. I can find out. I, I, I'll double check and make sure. I mean, unless you know. I just wanted to make but, sure there was actually something in the works to, to arrange for counsel or faculty in this process. Let me tell you, but I, it is not certain that I'm correct. I believe that that was a conversation um, involved. But I, I, I want to underline that, that I'm I'm also sort of separate from this necessarily. So so I believe that that was a conversation that might have involved some representation, legal representation, some faculty member. I, I believe that that might have been the nexus of it. But I, I really need to pause and make clear that I'm not certain that that's fact. I'm not quite sure again I can make sure that the offer is made again and it's clear to faculty who are interested. Yeah. I think there's some common thread here between the School of Medicine and the, and the uh, May 4th. And, and, and uh, excuse me, I'm a qualitative researcher, so I'm always asking questions about what's your definition of X and Y. Yeah. And I think what's, what's causing a lot of people some consternation across the university is what is the definition of external and what is the definition of independent? And I think a lot of folks feel like when the Board of Visitors hires a, a firm that's on retainer, that's on their retainer, they're being paid by the Board of Visitors, that that's not independent. And it's technically, it doesn't seem, I mean, it, it seems technically like it's independent, but not really independent. And I'm just curious about your thinking about, um, have you guys ever thought about, uh, like, in the, in the May 4th investigation, letting the faculty senate direct that investigation and giving them fu the funding to actually do it. And the same thing for the School of Medicine. Have you ever considered letting the faculty senators at the School of Medicine, if they so choose, to, to be in charge of that investigation and give them the funds to actually do the investigation so that it is, from the faculty's point of view, it is independent and it is external? Because I think there's a lot of consternation yeah. about the words external and, and independent. Yeah. Um. So my definition of independent is, is someone who is independent of um, any, of, any of the activities that are being reviewed. Um, uh, and so, um, you know, that, that could be, someone could be independent and internal, the way I think about it. So if you, if you decided to have faculty members, I don't know whether the faculty senate or a group of faculty, you had faculty who are not involved in a particular incident. I'm not commenting on May 4th or the medical um, school issues, but I would think a, a faculty committee that has nothing to do with the events would be independent, just in the same way that council that's from outside the university. Um, you know, finding someone who is completely independent of the university, I mean, that would be one definition of independent. But I don't even I don't know how you would even go about doing that because any external, especially if it's done by counsel, also has to go through the attorney general, who is the ultimate lawyer for the university, right? Um, external, I think of as outside of the outside of the university. So independent and external would be um, some group or somebody. Um, or some individual who is outside of the university, that's the external part, and who does not have any connection to the events. Um, but that doesn't exclude, if, 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 you're, if you're just focused on independent as opposed to external, I mean, my view is anybody, it could be students, it could be faculty and staff, anybody who was not at all involved with the thing that's being investigated would count as independent. The wisdom of, you know, choosing one group as opposed to the other would still need to be debated. But if you're just talking about definitions, that's how I would think of 
as it, that's what I would think of as independent, which yeah. is part of, you're right. I mean, that's part of what we've been doing going back and forth with the May 4th review. I think about our external accrediting bodies. They're external, they're independent, they come in, they accredit our programs, those kinds of, yeah. that kind of independence yeah. and externality. Yeah, yeah, I and mean, like a consulting firm is external and independent, sort of, I mean, depends. I mean, it's obvious, but also, yeah, I mean, we, we could debate the semantics. President of Ryan, we have, uh, your staff is what, who told us that you had a, a harder stop. Okay. But maybe we can yeah. take one more from Carol. Sure. Have yeah. her hand up earlier. Brian. Go for it. All right. Well, the position is you were called to here to have uh, challenges in the medical center uh, with our dealing practices and, and attention at that tree. And, and subsequently, um, we adjusted that policy and then we yeah. prior to that. It seems to me that something that's been lost in this, this conversation about school medicine is the original administrative imposition of a new managerial program, um, which drove discontent uh, between professionals in the school and, and, and department chairs and others and so forth. Well, then either that should be part of the investigation that we've learned from history that we can have policies that are ineffective, yeah. that don't work, that we don't want to support, we no. to find out the hard way. And this could well be another one of those. Yeah. So it seems to me it should either be part of this investigation or a separate investigation into does this work? Yeah. Who is consulted? Why are we implementing a new policy, a new strategy that suddenly creates uh, such discontent among professionals of the highest order and then resulted in the allegations of retaliation, of silencing, and so forth? So yeah. it seems to me we should be recited the fact that. The genesis, in some ways, one genesis of this is that policy. Yeah. And is that practice? And we know they can be fallible. So I didn't hear anything from the people at the BOB when they visited about that. I haven't seen much in the press about that, but it needs to happen one way or the other, I would suggest. Yeah. So the investigation is meant to um, investigate all the allegations in the letter. Um, to the extent that there are issues that are controversial that need to be discussed, or to the extent that there are general issues about culture in the health system that are not covered by the investigation, I have little doubt that there's gonna be more work to do outside of the allegations in the letter. Yeah. Thank you very much for the extra yeah. time. Thank you. And like I said, I hope to see you next Wednesday. And if you will have me, I'm I'm more than happy to do this because I think um, you get out of sync when you're not in communication. And I feel like, um, and that's on me. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we had. We had a discussion with Provost Bauckham about the order of the next uh, events and. Uh, we agreed it's uh, good to hear from the Board of Visitors letter, and then you may have some reaction or help to interpret that. And, and so we're not sliding you in any way with the... So Michael is going at this point. Uh, this is where we are, report of the Board of Visitors, representative to the Board of Visitors. Hi, everybody. Uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for those questions. Uh, good discussion. Some know this, others don't. Uh, before the previous EXCO meeting, which was two Fridays ago, I had a conversation with uh, Ms. Rachel Sheridan, who was referenced earlier. She's a member of the Board of Visitors, and she is the chair of the Audit Committee. I spoke with her about a range of things, and invited her to come to the EXCO meeting and to this meeting today to talk about the investigation, which uh, we just did quite a bit of, so uh, this will be redundant. But they came to EXCO, they made uh, a statement, they answered questions to the best of their ability. We invited them to reprise and come today, and they were unavailable. So they have asked that I read
Thank you. So bad I'm not in charge. Mm -hmm. This is a statement from Rachel Sheridan and Porter Wilkinson to the UVA Faculty Senate to be delivered by, by Michael Kennedy. That's in your on behalf of the Board of Visitors, we thank you for the opportunity to participate in today's meeting. We wish we, we could be present with you in Charlottesville, but our outside professional commitments have prevented us from joining you. We greatly appreciated your time and thoughtful engagement when we last spoke with you at Exco. We would like to reiterate our gratitude for all you have done and all you are doing as faculty and physicians to ensure that the university and the health system continue to stand out as world-leading institutions of learning and patient care. The allegations raised by a group of UPG employed faculty are very serious, and that is why carrying out an investigation that is robust, thorough, and independent is of paramount focus for the Audit Risk and Compliance Committee and the Board of Visitors as a whole. You have our commitment that the investigation will continue to be our priority, and that we will continue to protect the independence of the investigation. As has been the case from the beginning, administration at the university and the health system are not involved and will not be involved in any aspect of deciding what evidence to obtain, reviewing evidence, or supervising the investigation. They have not been and will not be involved in directing our outside law firm. How do I... There, it flipped. I got it? Okay. <clears throat> the investigation is well underway with our outside counsel conducting many interviews already in the past few weeks. There is a great deal of work that remains and we are not yet in a position to say when that work will be complete. That is in part because of the continued need for additional detail about some of the allegations. It is essential that anyone with knowledge about the allegations participate in the process so we can uncover the facts. As you heard from us previously, we have measures in place to ensure that this investigation operates with the highest level of integrity. As this process moves forward, we understand the importance of transparency and open lines of communication. We remain committed to sharing information about the status of the investigation as we are able consistent with the need to preserve the integrity of the investigation, as we described in our last meeting. We appreciate the help and support of this group and encouraging participation in the process, including from the faculty who raised the concerns. We care deeply about the university and the community we serve. We know you all do too. We see it in your everyday contributions throughout the School of Medicine and the health system. Our commitment to the best interests of the university will continue to drive our actions on this matter, signed by Ms. Rachel uh, Sheridan and Ms. Porter Wilkinson. I am not in a strong position to answer anything specific. Uh, I can try if there are any questions for me. David? Could you say just a word about who these people are? Yes, oh, of course I can. Uh, Mrs. Sheridan is a Board of, Ed, Board of Visitors member. This is her second year on the board. She's a, uh, an attorney herself. Um, and a UVA alum. She is the chair of the audit risk uh, committee for the Board of Visitors. And Ms. Porter Wilkinson is also a UVA alum, also an attorney. She works at the Smithsonian, and she is uh, the co-chair of the um, that committee, the audit committee. I think um, to what, what Walt asked about, I earlier was when they came and spoke to us. Yeah. Um, well, they said that they viewed this as independent because the audit committee does not, the audit committee is separate and distinct from the BOB. And uh, Ms. Wilkinson has only been on the board this year. Ms. Sheridan joined the board last year, but neither of them have been or alleged to have been involved in anything at the School of Medicine. And so they, this committee, the you know, audit committees are typically separate and independent from a board of directors on any public company that's part of the, you know, the way the audit committee is set up. So this has been commissioned through the audit committee, not through the BOV, so that if someone on the BOV had knowledge that didn't act or something like that, this committee is considered separate and independent from that. So that's why it's going through the audit committee, not through the BOV, not through the administration, et cetera. My, my concern was about the law firm that's been hired in a conflict of interest. But so who retained them is 
is considered in the list. Thanks. Thanks, Jerry. That's I appreciate that. Hi. Oh, hey. I guess I guess it's a related question. So they it, the document there says that the university administration and several other people won't be involved in directing the law firm. You say the board of visitors won't, or indeed that the audit committee won't. I mean, the audit committee is the person who hired them. And they're, the, that's, they're that's, the client. Yeah, they're the client. Okay, so directing doesn't mean giving detailed instructions. It means hiring and and hoping. They just see results. That's they defined the initial scope for them, yeah. I think, and then they said that the initial scope will change as it is what they told us last time. They had defined three things in the initial scope and said that the as they find out more information, that that scope will evolve. But, I mean, somebody has to hire the firm, right, and give them an initial scope, and so they are in that way directing them because somebody has to. And somewhere in here, they're trying to address the kinds of concerns that were raised over here that I guess there are faculty who think that this is already uh, some sort of slanted yeah. procedure and, it, and that it would be. Absolutely. And those were legitimate concerns, yes. which is why I invited the Sheridan and Ms. Wilkinson to come in the first place. It's why yeah. President Ryan made the remarks he just made. I'm sure Provost Balcom will make similar. So when she says we have measures in place to ensure that, well, and so on, what are the measures? Do we know? Carolyn. So Carolyn St. Divine, Divine Saint. I Okay, we'll have to. Yes. Um, is the is the university's internal auditor? Um, she is responsible for auditing the books of the different schools, um, and so she reports to the BOV, um, not to administration. They have set up um, a number or an email. It's both. Um, and this was part of the rector's letter that um, Margaret's going to try to see if maybe can be resent. But um, anyone who has concerns about repercussions can contact Carolyn. And because Carolyn is independent both of this investigation and of the BOV and administration, she will take that. And um, when Ms. Sheridan and Ms. Wilkinson came to see us, they said that Carolyn had already received contacts. So people are utilizing, that was two weeks ago too, right. that people are utilizing that system. And, and, and you know, it, it also raises that question about suppose I am a person is very worried about retaliation and not at all sure you know who has allegiance to whom and whether I'm protected. So it raises the question of access to legal support for me that is different from this set of lawyers who are acting for the okay. investigation. If there is mistrust, which there is, well, just, just saying that, yeah. yeah that's... And Carolyn is not a lawyer. Carolyn is an accountant. Right. Go accountant. Um, but yes, she, is, she has been charged with um, considering and overseeing the repercussions and figuring out how that how that gets handled. Right, and she's been counted. Carol? <laughs> Sorry, who does she report to? She reports to the BOV, doesn't she? Carolyn so is the internal. She is tied yeah, to thank you for that. She reports to the BOV, correct? She is so not when, when, But when there are, like, this is what an internal auditor does, right? Every year she, like, there were um, issues of financial um, malfeasance at the med school. She investigated that. And then she worked to re uh, refer and find ways to remedy that. Like she says, okay, here are the issues at the BOV. Like she goes, or not the BOV, the School of Medicine. Um, there were concerns at other schools about financial situation. And that's what she does. So yes, she like, I mean, everybody has to be paid by somebody, right? So she is an employee. Is she, is she a state or is she a BOV? She's the internal auditor of the university. So, so I don't actually know if she just gives them her reports or if she is hired by them. She might be a, like a higher level state employee. But I know when there are findings of financial malfeasance in schools, then she does report those to the audit committee because that's who deals with it. But yeah, I don't know. And what them. is her experience with culture of fear and retaliation? They figured she would be independent. If you have a better suggestion of someone who it would be. So it's not a, I'm not a suggestion. I would want someone with expertise in what they're looking for. And she sounds like she's great with numbers. How about some of the other allegations? I mean, she's an independent person is I think the, is the concern was that there was someone who is separate from the investigation, separate from the administration, separate from the BOV, and used to handling things that are sensitive. Like, her job is typically like she is going in and 
trying to uncover if there has been fraud. If So she is used to dealing with things that are related to culture and that oftentimes fraud is a cultural situation. So internal auditors do look at who reports to who, who has um, allegations of ability to control, who has allegations of reprisals if there are, um, you know, like, can I get three people to sign off on this check so that I can take the money? I mean, that is all cultural stuff and that is what internal auditors do in fraud investigations. And so her role is slightly different in that it's usually more about like the money and can I get you to agree to a check as opposed to can I get you to agree to not do tenure or things like that. But I would disagree that her background in fraud investigations doesn't involve culture. Let's go to Jason uh, and where I could see Jim stand, uh, stand, stand, stamps him up, which means, yes, uh, we need because we have the provost yet and we have a, a very important document for us to debate and discuss, although this is well worth our time. It's like a general question. What if what is found is not financial malfeasance, but, but, but profit at the expense of faculty? So up and up profit patient. at the expense of pa patient, also patients, but in fact, expense of other people, but it's not fraud. Yeah, no, or, but I, I mean, I, isn't their primary responsibility a fiduciary one to the university? So she is only dealing with if people are um, worried about, if not worried about, if they experience reprisal, what, what's the word? Retaliation. Retaliation, thank you. I'm like, it starts with an R, but that's not the right word. Um, if they experience retaliation, that's what's being reported to her. The external is talking about all the things you're talking about. If there was, like the external, what's our, we've got it on the resolution, the three um, prongs, and one of them is about financial malfeasance that could include overbilling or making decisions that harm patient safety. That's not hers. Her job is if you are worried about retaliation or if you experience retaliation, you report it through her. If you are concerned about these other things, you report it to the law firm, right? So like there's two yeah. separate things. Wait in here for a quick second. Uh, as someone who's studied a number of these kinds of reports, we are defining independent incredibly narrowly here. Um, very few people would think of a university employee as independent as a broad university. And in the case of the, the tragedy at Maryland a few years ago, the governor actually appointed a committee uh, to oversee that investigation entirely independent of the university itself. In that investigation, the, the, the Maryland equivalent, the Maryland System Board actually resigned. Um, and so, you know, who's culpable, what degree of independence you want varies quite widely. And here we're narrowly defining. And, uh, you know, I would, I would also say that fundamentally, um, this is an internal investigation by the UB. Um, using an outside law firm, and that is a pretty, a pretty standard approach that many people take. But I wouldn't confuse it with an independent investigation. Yep. Thank you very much. And uh, Provost Baucom uh, was uh, generous to attend our EXCO meeting, where uh, the DOB members uh, spoke with us two weeks ago. And this is your time. And uh, Provost Baucom offered to. Uh, take questions from this group. Just go. Uh, thank you very much. much. I'm happy to be as brief or uh, stay as long as you need me to. I know that you have an important business to take on. So um, I'm not going to give a broad overview and very, very much in the spirit of it's not good things to report. There are good things to report. I'm not going to report to them. I'm just going to come back and talk about those um, at a future meeting. So we just want to see how I can be helpful um, on this matter. There are a couple of pieces um, uh, informational for you in terms of the relationship and the work that we want to be doing with the Faculty Senate um, additional to uh, to this work, but let me let me just kind of pause uh, and see if I can be helpful in responding to any further questions uh, on this particular matter. And then I can see if you can to, uh, the next yes. I have a question about um, policies that were published yeah. the day before classes started. Yeah. Um, Seem to address one problem from the fourth, yeah. which was. The lack of clarity or perceived lack of clarity about policy. Yeah. Right. Can we have tents or can we not have tents? Yeah. It did away with that ambiguity. 
So from one perspective, it made it less likely that there would be need to bring in soldiers pointing guns at our colleagues and students. On the other hand, it made it a lot more likely. It made it a lot more likely because now it's very clear. There's no ambiguity. There's no place for the administration to hesitate about, well, do they know what the policy is? No, they know what the policy is. And so now they have one warning, I believe. Um, I believe that there are three moments, but I need to go back. Um, but I believe that there are three. There's initial, uh, there's initial, um, something is not consistent with policy. Just want to make you aware of it. I think then there's a second if the uh, policy violation continues, uh, giving you a warning of uh, five, 10 minutes, and then there's a third. Right, so it's very quick. Yeah. I have to say, I am not at all surprised that there have been no protests because nothing that's been done has addressed the, what at least I and a number of other people that I've talked to perceive as the real problem, which is that we brought military against our own people. And based on what the president just said, we're waiting for an investigation that is completely open-ended. And you're proposing that we have nice conversations, which is great, yeah. but when people are angry enough to protest and to break violations, yeah. some universities have seen that as a teaching moment yeah. and other universities have seen it as a moment to double down and affirm that there is there are right ways and wrong ways, and it's very clear. And I am really disturbed by this. Yeah, yeah. thank you. Um, one thing on this, and um, so maybe three, maybe three thoughts uh, on it. One is um, a fair amount, um, an important amount of you know, to be able to find a way. Um, if there is violation of policy, that's followed by as you know, understand the concern about it. If there's a violation of policy, it's followed by a series of um, that the university would be able to act in such a way that we did not have to bring in this. But just, just at one level, right? We could try to continue to work um, with the university. I don't know how much comfort that does or does not give, um, but I do know that for um, not all, but many people, it was the move to bring in the state meetings. That, that is one of the attempts to try the second thing is to try to identify um, policy um, responses to policy violations as much as possible rather than policing response. I mean, that's, that's, that's the hope. It, it may not be convincing, but I can tell you that that was very much a gun to try to find ways. There's a policy violation, there's a policy consequence. Uh, rather than if there's a policy violation, uh, there's a policing activity, and a policing activity can get you to the same. So that actually just really that. Um, if we're just doing nice conversations, then we're failing. Uh, and, and so one reason why we wanted to do the series on free expression, academic freedom, seriously, um, is to work not just as a policy institution, as a policy, um, but as a university. Um, and to do exactly this, what are, you know, how do we think through, where do people say, uh, and inviting the faculty senate to identify people who you would like to bring in have a conversation that would challenge, say that um, uh, proportional use of force, the relationship to an understood policy, policy violation. This is, we believe this is wildly disproportional. We would have someone to do that. So it's not, it's not designed to be kind of like a happy talk. It, it really is to say, uh, uh, what are the nature of um, the questions that have to be raised at a university? Relationship to protection of protection, protection of speech, openness of content neutrality. Are we getting that right? Are we not getting that right? Both to help us think about politics, but to do that, do that as scholars. And that, that, that is the invitation in this series, is for the Senate to say, these are the kinds of questions that we need to be able to raise, no matter how uncomfortable it might make me. Um, the review, um, I share the president's 
frustration. Um, one of the purposes of the view, and actually, no, one of the purposes of the view then, though, is then to have that opportunity uh, with expertise also to say, this is what other universities do, and maybe do this better than what we do. How can we not have that happen? How can we not have that happen at the university again and, and seriously? And then the fourth is on the policies um, as they were as they were introduced. Um, we want to ask you to help us take a look. So this is this is not like an abstract thing. It's like so what went in place? What's the effect? Well considered, not well considered. I'm not committing to anything in particular about the result. But we want to work with the policy committee of the faculty center uh, for you then to be able to come back and say, um, find, uh, you know, again, I'm not committing an investment, but we want to invite the faculty center to do that so that the policies really are live with the lived reality of the university, our constitutional obligations, and our character. <clears throat> May I say a comment about policies? Absolutely. Um, based yeah. on the policy chair, yeah. I want to um, thank the many stakeholders of the Faculty Senate for their input on the policy review process. I want to commend your office. I think it's much more meaningful when a diverse perspective of faculties are involved in previewing the policy before it comes from the hierarchical um, of entities that then formalize, right? When it comes, often our committee is one of many parties that's looking at a document that's come through many iterations of change and it's challenging then to weigh wanting to have something at the end with how did we get to this being the last, next to last draft. And so I think it is really meaningful that for the promotion and tenure policy and the changes to what we're calling the discipline policy, that it's not just last chance, right, for us to voice our complaints, but rather to be meaningfully involved in the creation of what becomes then the, the, the work that we then ratify at the end. And so I think that is a much more productive way to move forward um, based on the input that we got from our stakeholders. We have a new process in place to broaden people's access to the policies while they're being formulated. And on our committee, we are sort of waiting to come to steady state a little bit, but um, it is our hope that we can have um, a more participatory discussion of the policies um, that were circulated at the beginning of the semester so that we can be in a position to offer you meaningful collective assessment of where we are and where we'd like to be, whether or not you're ready to commit. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's what we want to do, and that's, um, and I want to thank Maite and everyone else, particularly for our office, Maite and, and you, uh, on the promotion and tenure process. And, and on the, the district policy, we've got to get things right, and we need to get on it. So thank you. Yes. Just to follow up on, as you know, the AUP has been really concerned about that whole process of getting those policies in. That it was pretty much we feel like it was a violation of shared governance principles and culture. Um, along those lines, um, you know, with what you said and what Lisa said, would you be willing to suspend those policies until there's a broader look by the faculty and students and staff into the appropriateness of those uh, of those policies? Because I think the problem is, is that it would, they were just shoved down everyone's throat in August and people are really not sanguine with the idea that the process wasn't up and up. Would you be willing to suspend those until we have a six month review of those policies? Uh, no, well, I, wouldn't. I mean, it's an honest question, and I, and I owe you an honest answer. So, uh, so no, I think that we need to have policies in place, and that we do have policies in place. I do want to commit to you to take you seriously, but just honest question to honest answer. Thank you very much. Thanks. Um, and uh, just a couple of other things. Um, there are a couple of, a series of very important um, processes that are about to get underway. One is the search for the next dean of the library. Um, so I want to thank John Unsworth for his service, and we will, I think we already have a faculty senate representative uh, on that sort Correct. of thing. Correct. He's here, Bob. Uh, oh, okay. For us. Great. So one of the things, thank you, one of the things that um, we committed to um, when I became provost, frankly, following the unusual process that brought me to the provost, not, um, was that we needed to be sure that all searches at that level, provostial level, the canal level, moving forward, there's faculty senate representative. So we've been working with Jim on that process. Um, some of you will have seen the news um, that came out this week that 
uh, Dean Nicole Jenkins term as the McIntyre School scheduled in June. We'll be launching uh, at some point relatively soon a search for the next dean. I want to thank Dean Jenkins for her service. Um, and again, Jim will work with you to ensure uh, we have a faculty center representative. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, we, we need to uh, quickly address the minutes from the last Senate meeting. Those were in your inbox. Uh, all this is is saying welcome and remember that we have a constitution and bylaws that are movable into the future. This is the, uh, I guess we're, uh, this is the beginning of that document, the minutes from September 20th, one month ago. Uh, you've had an opportunity to review it for a week. And we should we approve the minutes. Or... Oh, there's a motion. Is there a second for that? All in favor of approving those minutes? A second. Uh, yes. Jessica Sewell. All opposed to that? Uh, thank you very much. And the minutes are approved from September 20th. So we're uh, now going to, uh, in the interest of getting to the deliberation of this draft resolution, we're going to uh, jump to the number seven in the agenda, and that discussion is going to be led by uh, Brian Pusser and Jerry, and, uh, and if there are others of you who are on that uh, volunteer group, and our uh, path in this is to uh, have, the have the resolution and then uh, there's opportunity to make primary motions for primary amendments, and then there can be a secondary amendment on the primary, but the discussion and the, um, these uh, motions to amend, they're confined to the, uh, to the scope of the, uh, the uh, resolution. And, that, that's, uh, and then we will, when, when the amendments, of course, need votes here, but then the, the vote on the resolution itself will take place from Monday, to Wednesday, 72 hours uh, run by the staff here. And that's in order that you reach to your peers for consultation, that you reflect, and that we get it right uh, and not in the hurry of this meeting, as well that we have time for the other items of the agenda. So uh, Jerry and uh, Brian, that's uh, for you. Okay, um, so let me just give a little history of how we got here very briefly, and then um, and then we'll put the resolution up and I'll read it and we'll for uh, a motion. Um, so the genesis of this is a motion that was made at the September meeting calling for the creation of a resolution on the events at the School of Medicine for consideration by the Senate and that resolution, that motion was passed. So um, Chair Lambert called for volunteers from the Senate to create a draft. It's got a wide ranging group of senators, including Matthew Bolton, Gita Patel, Jessica Stubel, Jerry Seidman, Brian Wright, Keenan Yount, um, and then came together, organized by uh, Chair-elect Jerry Seidman. Um, if I left anyone out, please forgive me. We've been having a number of different kinds of meetings with our clients, and um, other people certainly weighed in with us in that process. Um, there were three separate sessions of the group working on the draft, and that's one reason why people um, not all at the same meeting. <coughs> um, as was mentioned earlier by, uh, by Michael, um, Exco also met with two members of BOV uh, prior to drafting the resolution. So some of the Exco shared thoughts about that that were also included in some of the deliberations around the resolution. Um, then the draft resolution was presented to Exco in a meeting last week, and it was placed on the agenda for today. So if we can, can we put it up? And then yes. I'll, and then I'll. Read and then we, we, because of this technology, we have. Oh, this was your motion from uh, a month ago. And then uh, here's the resolution, but we're going to need to move to Word so that it's editable, just in the in case there are motions to amend. If that makes sense. Okay. okay, so let me read the resolution on the institutional climate within the UVA School of Medicine and Medical Center. Whereas School of Medicine faculty have described bullying, retaliation, and secrecy. Whereas senators representing the School of Medicine have detailed university administration's concerns. Whereas it is difficult to reconcile President Ryan's written remarks in support of UV leadership with the actions described by senators representing the School of Medicine. Whereas the Senate is disappointed that university administration did not fully utilize the Senate's role in their governance and decision-making 
regarding how to investigate and remediate concerns to the School of Medicine Medical Center. Be it then resolved that the UVA Faculty Senate affirms its support of School of Medicine faculty, understands the stated scope of the investigation to include one, clinical care, two, retaliatory behavior, including bullying, intimidation, threats, and retribution, and three, spending and financial concern and the impacts of these on patients, faculty, and staff at the School of Medicine. Three, encourages the investigation to also include review of all allegations of efforts to silence School of Medicine faculty complaints, delay awareness of institutional climate concern. Four, recognizes the voluntary nature of participation in this investigation, encourages members of the School of Medicine and Medical Center community to participate and request resources for them to be able to retain their own counsel during participation if desired. Five, calls for the audit compliance risk committee of the Board of Visitors to commit to the timely public release of the report of the investigation with anonymity and redactions as required by law. And six, calls for Senate and other peer elected faculty involvement in decision making regarding how to proceed based on the report. So I will uh, stand down there and um, we need a motion. We can't discuss until there's a motion on the floor. So right. move to accept. Second. There's a second. All in favor of this? So we're uh, we're transitioning to a, a word file that's editable in front of this room, and presumably in the uh, for the hybrid participants as well. They'll be able to see the edits being uh, made in case there are uh, motions to amend. And the only thing I've edited so far is I removed the draft portion where it said draft and the date at the top. So that's the only thing I've removed. This is other. Can you make it bigger because. Of um, <laughs> uh, it's a word right now. This is word. Yeah, it just starts to fall off. I think, but yeah, is that a little better. Yeah, definitely. We can also probably stop looking at the resolution piece at the top. So we do want to discuss the things. Bim, Bim, are you calling people or am I calling? Yeah, I'd like you to. Okay, and, uh, great. Um, questions. Okay, do you have a question for me online, and then I'll. Uh, oh, and it's hard to see. It's, it's really the tiny visions. from my hair. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> I think they were still like left over votes. Okay, they were left over votes. Okay, um, then I'm calling on Jim. Just a comment on number three. I asked the president if he would agree with this provision, and he accepted it. But he's not in charge of the investigation. No, but yeah. I'm saying that in principle, he said he'd support that. So, um, Jim, to your, our idea in the Be It Resolved, number two is also what the um, audit committee and compliance risk committee chair and vice chair told us are the stated scope of the investigation. We just, that was stated to us and isn't necessarily public knowledge. So putting it here was a part of a way to make it public knowledge. So, and like he said to us that, you know, isn't necessarily public knowledge, putting it here is a way to make that public knowledge. If yeah, I want to ask Brian, um, your question to, to Jim Ryan earlier was about expanding the scope of the investigation to include something about how did we end up here, who decided, you know, under what sort of, uh, what pressures or, or fads or fashions of um, medical school governance did we end up here, and shouldn't that be part of it? Now, I can see reasons why it might not be strategic to put that in here at this point, but on the other hand, what exactly were you thinking when you asked that question, and is there a way that it would be um, useful to add something at that level? Um, it's a good question, and it might be better directed at people in the School of Medicine. Huh. So it really gets at the kind of managerial practice that was enforced and was contentious. It must come up in conversations with people who are being talked to during this 
investigation, but it isn't expressly stated, as you say. Um, my sense was just really to raise the issue <coughs> out there that there hadn't been much talk about um, one of the precipitating one of the um, and practice the new new managerial technique itself needed to be evaluated and reassessed. And, but as I say, maybe some of our colleagues from the School of Medicine could speak to that better than I. Um, Stephen Culp has raised his hand, so. Um, Stephen, you can go ahead and unmute and address the room. You will be a disembodied voice because we can't see you, but we would be happy to hear from you. So, um, can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. Really well. so I think, um, yeah, no, I, I, I like the wording of everything, but on that point, I think one of the big things that the last meeting, which is what I tried to illustrate, was, um, yes, we're going to have at the local level concerns. Each school is going to have their how do you go about addressing concerns? But I think the big takeaway, at least for me and my colleagues in the School of Medicine Faculty Senate was that we did go above the School of Medicine to address these concerns. And we were, I don't want to say silenced, but not hurt, or it felt that way. And the concern where you could take this resolution specifically <clears throat> supporting the School of Medicine, but also from a Faculty Senate perspective, broaden it in that this can't happen or should not happen in, with any school within the university. That if you go above your dean or your, um, you know, the head of your school, you should have a, uh, a uh, pathway to be listened to and for things to be uh, addressed. Thank you, Stephen. Um, yeah, Charlotte. I'm uh, with number two in the whereas. The, I'm a little confused about the verb detailed. Senators representing the school medicine have detailed, so if we would take out all the adjectives, senators have detailed awareness. Does it mean they have detailed it or they have detailed awareness? <laughs> so they have detailed the administration's awareness to us. This originally was a three-line point that included that they had told us about all of the meetings that they had had, which was really what we were trying to get at. So we pared it down to just say, what we really meant was they have shown that they had lots of meetings. The administration was aware of the concerns. How about demonstrated? Demonstrated? Right. Or communicated? Put the word the after detail as a friendly amendment. Yeah, the university administration. That would make it clear. Okay, so there's a friend, does, does a friendly amendment have to have a motion? I think we can have. Okay. But the the feeling is what you do to your car at a car wash. Okay. 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 <laughs> Okay. Have one online. It's all. Awesome. Um, um, Sue, so in the second, I'll Gita real quick. Uh, Gita, you can unmute. How about have provided details? Of? Yeah, I just wanted to say that one of the things we were, I think it's great to do the grammar on it, to make it, to clarify it. But one of the things we were moving away from, which I thought was absolutely necessary, is the word allegations, right? Because... Uh, specific things have been described to us. They have been made clear to us. They have, you know, um, so they literally, the details have been given to us. And um, allegations actually then puts the onus of the burden of proof on faculty again, uh, faculty and, and other people who've been affected by the by what's happened in the SOM. So just wanted to to make that clear. Because we were we were doing the whole beginning of this conversation with Jim Ryan was extremely disturbing to me because we went back to allegations again. Thank you, Gita. Um, so on the um, be it resolved number two. Yes. Um, two different things. So one, um, including um, trainees or residents, fellows um, in the list at the back. Uh, you know, patients, faculty. You know, include others. Mm -hmm. But if you just say at the School of Medicine, would that also include patient care at the health center? You know, so there are other clinicians that are involved with the health center that are also, you know, um, have uh, situ situational things. Um, and I'm not sure if just in the School of Medicine is inclusive of that. So um, this is probably Maybe good somebody from here from our School of Medicine. Um, when we have discussed this, one of the things we considered is the faculty senate primarily speaks about our responsibility to senators. 
Um, and so that's why it was School of Medicine. But if any of our School of Medicine faculty want to weigh in about whether it should be broader. Oh, also, I sent way too many embarrassing hearts um, accidentally in our last meeting um, when Brian Wright did also spend, su suggest that we want to make sure the wording is correct, but also if it's clear to everybody what we mean. Um, so School of Medicine faculty, um, uh, wait, I, I'm gonna see if anyone has any thoughts on this one first. Yes. It can be broader because it would probably work with other staff and faculty from other schools, uh, like School of Nursing or other schools. So yes, it could be broader. Is that School of Medicine and MC? Is that SOM and MC? Or is that health system? What is what what is that language that MC is encompassing? At the MC encompasses everybody? SOM and MC. SOM and MC. Okay. I would also add trainees because they are students and they're part of the, re they are a, a major reason that the university exists. Okay, so I'm hearing a motion to add MC and MC to the end of point two and um, add trainees, or I'm hearing murmuring of that motion. Can I have that motion? Someone, yeah. Make a motion to add um, trainees and students. And then a motion to add an MC as tall as one. Should it be MC or health system? I think MC since we don't want to get into cold pepper. So this is what the motion would look like. Um, do I have a second for this motion? Okay. Um, all those. Is there any discussion on this motion? Are we? Seeing no discussion, I'm going to call the vote. All those in favor of this amendment? Any opposed to this amendment? Okay, seeing none, I'm seeing all the hands going down. I'm going to say that this motion is accepted and this is how, amendment, sorry, this amendment is accepted and this is what number two looks like now. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir, questions about the first two resolutions. Uh, for the second, understands the stated scope of the investigation. And uh, I don't think there's any explanation of what the investigation is. Okay. That's an excellent observation. Yeah, and for the first point, um, uh, yeah, it sounds we all support the faculty. Uh, I, I don't know what that sentence means. Um, so it was intended to um, sort of be a stands with um, that the Senate is um, supporting that our School of Medicine um, faculty uh, had concerns, that we appreciate them raising those concerns, that we support their ability to raise those concerns and have those concerns be heard. I don't know if anyone else who was in this have additional thoughts, but that was my interpretation of it. Um, and that was a big piece of the, the conversation at EXCO was the concern that the fact that we stand with the School of Medicine faculty should be very clearly what is, you know, sort of the core of this resolution. Um, the original draft had a lot more detail, right? And it was sort of trying to get it down to what's really the, the most important in this idea of standing with our fellow faculty yeah. is like the, the number one piece. Well, I, I, uh... mm. I, I didn't get that, but but um, it, it still seems pretty vague. I mean, it, or you say, you know, we stand in them and deeming this worthy of investigation. Yeah, we need to mention that we support an investigation or is an investigation. Does that go with Both bare ass? Together in the first part of one. In one, it says, and secrecy, comma, and, and, and a BOV audit investigation is ongoing, something like that. In line one, it could be its own new whereas. A new, its own whereas. The uh, uh, audit committee of the Board of Visitors has in it initiated its investigation. investigation, and then that sentence would make sense. Does it fit for? It seems like there's a amendment, a motion for an amendment bubbling up. Does it fit whoever's going to be making this in this position? Sure, no, because yeah. that that. The second whereas and the current third whereas are 
respond to each other, right? Second, whereas says the senators at the SOM have given us stuff, and then Ryan responded, and it's weird. Okay, so it fits better here, is what you maybe it's the second one. It's either the second one or the fourth one. Okay. Or or the last one. The last one word work also. Yeah. yeah. All of this is like last. here's how we it all happen now that we know there's a I kind of like our last one. It feels very like, hey, you forgot about us. But if everyone else feels I, like, I, I, I have like second, right? That there's been this description. No, I, some action is happening, and then we're getting into more detail but, of the relationship. The, the second one is the fact that the School of Medicine senators have documented a history that the administration was aware and did nothing. Let's. Right. Try to start it here and see what we think about it and see what this looks like. And we can always copy it and paste it if it ends up in a different place. So this is, um, there's a, there has been an investigation. This is what we're putting in this. There hasn't been, but there will be. There, Ongoing. Well, it started. So there is. So it, it had. It Whereas the audit, this, oops, audit, compliance, and risk committee of the Board of Visitors has commissioned. Is that how you spell it? Okay. Um, an investigation into these allegations. Oh, sorry. Into these um, description. into these actions. Into this matter. Matter or concerns? I think matters into these matters. Into these matters. Maybe we should change it in a second. This is killing me. My engineering soul is just dying. Okay, so does anybody like this enough to make a motion here? Or I got a question before she thinks. I really think that that the Board of Visitors have commissioned an investigation here, and they may have delegated audit compliance and risk to no, work with William Conley. But audit compliance and risk doesn't contract with people like William Conley. I think the Attorney General was the one who approves the official contract, right? So um, I think the contract is between the Audit Compliance and Risk Committee, um, and the Attorney General, the State Attorney General, is the one who approves it. I but but by her description, it was from the audit because she talked about how it was highly unusual that it did not come from the BOV, how it came specifically from the Audit Compliance and Risk Committee, which was very unusual for that to be the way it was handled. So the Board of Visitors made the decision that it come to the Audit Compliance and Risk Committee. So if we simply say the Board of Visitors has commissioned an investigation, that's fine. That's the blanket okay. statement. How they work it out okay. is different, but. They delegated it, not giving it around. Okay. It's the, it was the committee on behalf of the board. Yeah, on behalf, of the board. Board. on behalf of the board. Let's just leave it. Do we have to say the university? Does this make any motion? Well, we're we're going to make the motion. <laughs> Get it right. Um, are we happy with this? Is anyone happy enough to make a motion for this yet? Are we still discussing it? I move we add this whereas. I'll second it. Okay. Any discussion on this proposed whereas? We're happy with matters and concerns. Okay. Then uh, if I see no discussion, uh, are you discussing or are you calling? No, I'm calling the vote. Okay. No. Um, then yes, uh, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Okay. You guys good? Okay. Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Aaron. I had a concern with number four, um, specifically the part about UVA providing funds um, for faculty to hire private counsel. From what we heard today, uh, that is not within UVA's power to do and must be uh, approved by the Attorney General. So it seems odd for us to request something of UVA that they cannot provide. Um, I disagree. I don't think that's what we heard. We heard President Ryan saying that he had offered to School of Medicine a model for providing counsel, and they had rejected it. And then he said he wasn't sure how that went down. But I, I asked 
I, so, I thought he said, I, I might have misheard, but I thought he said the Attorney General has to approve all of this. He had to, the Attorney General approved the original contract support of it, but, but this matter of being able to provide counsel um, to our to our the university employees involved in investigation, he said that there's a model for that. We offered it and it was rejected. And that's why I asked him who rejected it. It was not the Attorney General. So my understanding is they can offer something. Internally, I think, and we absolutely have. In fact, yeah, that they, they have done for the yeah. Yeah, yeah. That, that that sounds correct. Yes, and the, the, the reason is because council offered General. to the if through the group. university, so it's council from the university in order for council to come externally to the school of medicine employee, wherever they are, it needs to be approved by the attorney general. So if we want to have council from outside. It would have to be approved by Attorney General again. If we want counsel from inside, that was offered. And, and I'm not, I, yeah, I, I thought that was asking for external counsel. This is this is asking for counsel that they choose, whereas opposed to what was offered to them was counsel a, a counsel that. But but here's the other thing: internal counsel. We intentionally wrote this as it isn't asking UVA for it. It isn't asking the BOV for it. It's asking for someone to figure out how to do it. Um, so okay. yeah. this this is yes. relatively broad. This could even be asking the attorney general to figure out how to do it. Like this is just asking for there to be resources. It could be a fundraising campaign. Um, but this is, it was intentionally written so because we weren't sure who could approve, if that helps. Sure. Uh, yeah, Amy. Um. The second and the current second and third whereases, I can sort of understand where they came from, and um, the the harm that the president's letter did the faculty, and at the same time, they don't seem related to the rest of the resolution to what we resolved to do, and. They also seem to um, be, yeah, they seem to be a just some something of a distraction from everything that they're asking for. What's uh, this when especially given President Ryan's explanation of wanting to have time to for the for the process to play out and give due process to all of I'll call on you in a second. One thing one thing I do want to um say is another reason why and so I thought the tone of President Ryan's email was difficult to read. Um but one thing to note is that deans are not hired by the BOV and neither are uh, Craig Kent, whatever his CEO L system, neither of those are hired by the BOV. They, they are hired by the provost and by the president. And so I do think that there was a little bit of that in there too, that the letter sort of suggested that maybe the BOV had the right to fire those people when the way that they are hired comes from the provost and the president. So I, I do think there was a little bit of that, that I didn't necessarily understand how that structure worked at first, um, but understanding that, I think there was a little underlying of that in his message too. N not only wanting there to be due process, but also this is not the person who has the right to fire these people. You know, a, a dean is handled by the provost and um, the health system is handled by the president. Carol. Um, yeah, I was going to say, I, I don't see it the same way you do. I think those two are very important. It's background information that sets the stage for why this is such an important resolution. If, although the final whereas kind of does it too. So maybe it'd be better to group them, Jason. Or, or it, it's the final, whereas kind of summarizes or restates in a more general way, the number two and number three. Just a question from my own personal understanding. The second, whereas senators representing the SOM have detailed the university administration's awareness that, that the source of that information is the presentation that was made in the previous faculty senate meeting by Dr. Cole. I just want to make sure yep. there was yeah. no additional information. Thank you. Nope. A list of meetings. Yep. Okay, so do I have a motion regarding these? Is there a motion about moving? Is there a motion about striking? Are we happy with them? I'm going to ask whether 
David, you felt that that issue was the one you could address. Because I actually rereading it in light of your comments, I have similar concerns. It's so general, I just oh. you know, I don't know how effective it is. The top one or the so, you know, number, oh, number one? Okay, okay. Um, can can we um make sure uh, we we've resolved the two whereas's first? Okay, so we're moving on to number one. Okay, so discussion about this. So I didn't know whether we're saying we support their request for serious consideration of the issues or their right, uh, right to uh, raise these issues in this body or like what is it that we're saying that we support? What like what is much of the rest of this is fairly specific and this is such a, a great point. So it could what, also what be like a whereas, but that would be a, quite a general whereas at the very beginning. Um, whereas the faculty senate affirms its support all faculty to raise concerns relating to their workplace environment or their treatment. I mean, in a sense, it is a response to the third whereas. In other words, our feeling that Ryan's letter was kind of suppressing or diminishing the faculty entitlement to raise its concerns, right? And that this number one is kind of saying, no, Actually, it, it, you know, so maybe you just said that just in support of School of Medicine faculties, um, uh, you know, decision to raise their concerns or something like that. Rather than, because it could be taken to mean we already know the outcome of the investigation and we know that, right? And, right? and that's what you're, but what we are supporting at least at a minimum and initially is that it's, that we think, hey, you should have done this. We we think that raising the concern is absolutely within their rights and that President Ryan's remarks are sort of alarmingly belittling, right? So the number one here is our response to that. <laughs> Workplace. Well, it's something more powerful than a firm like support or courage. Indicates. <laughs> Concerned about it. But I, I don't know. A firm feels stronger to su than support to me. Yeah, it does. A firm yeah. feels clear. Feels stronger. Uh, do we like this? Is there one or do I instead oh, of one? Oh, what happened? Am I over here? I'm, I'm not a Mac person. What happened? Okay. Oh, no, that's not. Sorry. This is not. Don't look. Close your eyes. I hope. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Sorry, Jim. Okay. Okay. Ooh, and something magical happened, and we're back here now. So great. Okay. Um, Are you closing that as taking the place of number one? Um, it's, it's, I'm just trying to respond to what I heard and write it down and see if there's, I think there's a proposal bubbling up. Maybe it's in addition, maybe it's in, um, replacement. I'm just writing. So do we like this? And then we can talk about whether it's an addition or whether it's a replacement. I like it as an addition, I think. Then we go into the specifics afterwards, and this is a very general statement which does not only apply to the school of medicine. Yes. Do you want to say something? Oh, that's fine with me. I really don't want to get rid of number one. I think the first resolution is extremely important because it's basically saying all you know, school of medicine faculty concerns are the concern of the faculty center. And I think that is a statement that needs to be made very strongly and clearly. So do we like this first whereas enough for anyone to move? to add it or I was just playing around. So if no, we can, I can also delete it if we're not happy with it. Um, if, we're, if we're keeping the first whereas, can we add to the second, whereas the School of Medicine faculty have described uh, bullying, retaliation and secrecy when they raise their concerns? Uh, that links the two. Okay, so Brian just made a motion. So can we have a second to Brian's motion? And then Gita, we can have discussion about this motion. But Brian, 
moved to add the first row. I'll withdraw my motion. We'll make one. Okay, so Brian is amending his motion to include um, when they raised such concerns. <coughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm concerned that that makes it sound like the bullying and re retaliation secrecy took place when the concerns were raised, right. but it took place before the concerns were raised. That's why the concerns uh, Okay. I had... Okay. Before. So, so Brian has made a motion to add this first bullet point. Do I have a second right. to that motion? Okay. Do I have a second to that motion? Um, do I have discussion about this first line? Okay. Seeing no discussion, can I call, I'm going to call the vote on adding the first line. All those in favor? Okay. Any opposed? <clears throat> the first line has been added. Um, let's see. It was added and we are happy with it as an addition. Great. Awesome. Okay. I have a question. Yes. Um, and I'm sorry to go back to the resolution number two. Yep. I I think I'm just for clarity's sake, when we say understands, is it implied that that we also support the investigation that is currently underway around these particular areas? I think what it implies that we um support a stated scope. So I do, I do think that understands is um, sort of supporting that the stated scope is relatively wide. I think the I think the concern was that um, when we first met, before we met with uh, the BOB members, we had no idea they had if any school of medicine faculty who've gotten a letter just said we're having an investigation about the things raised in the letter. Well, the things in the letter were like eight different things, right? So were they investigating all of them? And this is what they came and said. Um, Brian? So, yeah, just, uh, I understood a little bit different, Jerry. Okay. Those two got written, on the one hand, we said, here, we understand that you are going to look at these three things. And then right. it says, and we would also like you to add some stuff. Yeah. It doesn't say we support necessarily the approach they're taking. It simply says, we understand that this is what you're going to do. Like, I understand you're going to foreclose on my house if I don't pay the mortgage. At the same time, doesn't mean I support you doing it. Just says, you know, I understand that's your intention. Here's some things to think about. Maybe I'll sue you if you do this. Maybe some other things will happen. But I, I don't think it implied, we meant it to imply support. So if it does, we probably should edit it a little bit. If, it, if you can uh, And I, uh, I saw it the same way as Brian does, which is that we, um, that we, you know, we know that this is happening, right? And we've obviously, I mean, in the discussion, we've obviously raised concerns about uh, the form it's taking, et cetera, et cetera. So I don't know. I mean, I, I guess my support meant we're happy it's not narrower, mm -hmm. that we are calling for it to be wider. We are a for, we are supporting that is it, it is at least this wide and we want it to be wider. Um, I was concerned that it was going to be narrower just because there were lots of things in the letter and it's a very broad investigation. So I, that was my. Um, okay, we are at five minutes now. Um, again, this is going to be voted on online Monday through Wednesday, um, but this is kind of last chance for motions on it. Looks like I've got um, a hand. And Ann Rodich, um, is that left over from voting? If not, please unmute yourself. Okay, I think it's left over. Um, Eve. I'm just wondering about the and at the end of number five, because we can't see number six. Oh, number six number calls six. for Senate and other peer elected faculty involvement in decision-making regarding how to proceed based on the report. And also that that's right. Yep. Yeah, Amy. Oh, can I solve that linking problem between the two first two whereas is by replacing we replaced detail uh sorry described with raised concerns including huh. um so in number two there is a a motion yeah okay Amy has made a motion to um connect one and two better by saying raised concerns about bullying retaliation. Oh, 
Apparently, Ms. Bell concerns. Really? I would just want you to have a. Oh, like I spelled it right. Okay. Well, okay. Um, raised concerns about bullying, retaliation, and seizures. Um, is there a second to this motion? Okay. Carol seconded it. Any discussion on this motion? Yeah. Oh, so we have the word in their workplace after something. I think that would be better. Okay. Brian, are you moving to add in their workplace? Oh, you can't because we have to vote on the first motion first. Can I, I think it'd be better. So, I enough. think it'd be interesting. Okay. I think we won't get okay. Okay, so we have a motion to um, change the language on number two to better connect it to number one. Um, any discussion? Okay, calling the vote. Those in favor of this new wording for number two? Any opposed? Great. Okay, you now have two minutes. Yes. Yeah, we, we keep skirting the number one resolution. Um, okay. Uh, uh, I think Judy had a... a Good suggestion, and and uh, I agree with Jennifer for the word support, but um, it still strikes me as pretty vague. And um, the uh, we were supporting, we're behind all the medical faculty. Uh, uh, what about uh, support uh, in requesting an investigation or something? In their request, as a school of medicine faculty senator, I think that statement is important. It is. It's greatly it is. appreciated, and I think it should stay. Yeah. And, we also so as it is, I, 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 I completely, uh, another. It's important for the faculty yeah. Yeah. to take a stand with yeah. your faculty colleagues yeah. and say, we support School of Medicine faculty. Yeah. And as a School of Medicine faculty center, I cannot tell you how important your support is to us. I appreciate it. Yeah. If you feel harmed, I am harmed by that, right? And so I, I actually support the yes. bigness of the support. Yeah. That <laughs> comes with a lot of things. I've said. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, yeah, I. Yeah. Okay. We support you when you think you're okay. <laughs> okay. So I think this is where we um, have ended up. This will be posted. No, no, no. Oh. We need a move. We need yeah. a move to connect it as a group. Uh, oh, we didn't. What resolution? Oh, this, so, no. This is coming up for a vote on online. Right. Okay. But we make them. I move that we accept this to get a second and then, oh, and then the vote. Yeah. 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 I, I, okay, so Brian moves okay, so and um, Michael seconded. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Sorry. Okay, cool. Thank you. Good job, Jerry. Vote on. Can we vote on? You should try to do that. Wait, and now we have to vote. We have to vote, vote to approve no. this amended draft as we should be voted okay. on. Oh, we do? Well, we that was what we, we just voted on. Okay. So oh. Yes, we do. Okay, so we're moving to vote on this online this week. So all those in favor? Okay. Any opposed? Okay, sorry, I did not understand that. Okay, I'm going to attempt to go back to PowerPoint. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Thank Jerry, you. great Thank job. You yes. Well, we're we're going to uh, <laughs> get a preview of some items that are moved till the next Senate meeting and then moved up to the social gathering. But I think it's important to mention that. Uh, uh, I tell you, Brie, we have to do this uh, next month. And uh, so uh, I, I will send these slides around because some of it is more time sensitive. There's a 25 October workshop on a sea of accommodation. So I'll send it to the entire Senate. And uh, this is the uh, reports of the standing committees. So is anyone want 10 seconds to do something urgent? Well, this is not really, um, I don't know if it's 10 seconds, but the AAC um, passed um, two degree programs, proposals for BSED in secondary education and BSED in English as a second language. I believe the representative of the school has decided, you know, like she must have had to leave, um, but I know um, the IRA team is here, but it, as this program, we have to vote on it for the Senate before these can be passed. And they need to get these going in terms of moving. Should we do it now? You're saying we if should we do can, it. Um, I put so there's it one, they've been in your inbox for a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is the, the highlight of one of them and then the highlight of the second. Yeah, I can give you year. the background in terms of like why they're moving to the BSED. They were master's programs. And 
The state, the Virginia Department of Education, as well as Chev, has encouraged people to be moving back to the bachelor's degree for a lot of the teacher education to get teachers in schools and to address the teacher shortage. So they provided, you know, really good, strong um, mechanisms. They're using a lot of the master's program in moving it to the bachelor's. Um, but I hope that I can answer questions. And um, one question yeah. I have is: Do we have a quorum? Maybe we can put this online if we don't have a quorum. A lot of people logged off, I think. And if we don't have a quorum, then... a, a quorum's like forty percent. I'm. Well, I think forty. I lost changes. It's it's half. For for I think it's still forty percent. I mean, I think we have forty percent. Forty percent for this this body. Would be what? Yeah, we're we're clear. It's uh. Yeah, I just don't want to wait another month for this to go to chat. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of practices around chat. Okay, so, motion or questions? Or? The two of them or the first one? First one. Both. The one they're, very, they're, they're similar in terms of their structure. Move and to accept both of them. <laughs> <laughs> Second? Second. Um, discussion or all in favor? Yeah. Um, the okay. second was Jim uh, Savage. Thank you. Were there any issues that came up in your discussion? Um, the only the feedback on the proposals was that. Uh, um uh really they um no we we these were clean cool. but we had some questions on the next ones that are that went through thank you brian good question yeah yeah i don't have there were no concerns with the, the program are we ready to vote on that on, uh, we did uh, all, in second. all in vote. there was a second all in favor Good. Being opposed to that. Thank you. So right. those are approved. Thank you for um, sharing with me. Um, Great job. They will be happy. 10 seconds on behalf of the policy committee. It keeps coming up that stakeholders want to be involved in policy creation and uh, revision. And so we have added a change from our part of the Faculty Senate website. It's very easy to find out this policy. You can go to the box and see what we're working on at any given time. We have two deadlines coming up over the next 10 days. So take a look if you are interested in providing feedback. Thank you. Thank you very much. And, uh, can, I, can I just add one more thing? Um, I think we need to, just to add to the Senate, the general, what we need to do in the Senate, we're still dealing with questions of shared governance and academic freedom issues that were raised today and raised in um, in relation to the SOM. So I'd like to just put that on the general agenda. Gita, thank you. We will. I, I put it uh, else. It's later in the notes. I'll show you where it shows up as well. Thank you very much for reminding that. And then one of the best happening is this uh, open enrollment webinar that Brad, uh, Brad's committee, the Re uh, Recruitment, Retention, and Retirement and Welfare ran. And congratulations for the success of that, Brad. Do you want to say any else? It's posted on the the audio is posted on the Senate's website. Yeah, and all the resources, the slide decks are posted. Today is the last day of open enrollment, so you may have already made your decisions. <laughs> Back to the Senate, not even you. Thank you very much. So uh, this committee, I don't know, uh, I didn't hear there's a report, but Jennifer or Eric uh, Grievance is addressing one or more cases. They're very busy. Uh, finance committee. Jim, thank you. You've been contributing all through the meeting, but what would you like to add here? Annuals, <clears throat> the vice provost committee. We're scheduling a time where we can all get together. So it's in process. Thank you very much. Uh, this uh, group we'll hear from uh, next time. And then uh, we met in EXCO with the staff senate. It's very important. Uh, we have some shared interests with the, the staff Senate. There are many more of them than the faculty. So more to come on that. This uh, faculty Senate of Virginia, if you're interested, is meeting at the very beginning of November. Any of you, we're happy to send you there. I believe it meets in Richmond, but we'll have to confirm. So uh, know that there's an, uh, there's an umbrella over faculty Senates of the schools. And then uh, several of us met with this uh, association of associations uh, many uh, affinity groups, as they're called, and uh, the, the Faculty Senate is, in a way, an affinity group. So we, we are part of this and meeting with once a month uh, with, these, with these groups. Then uh, these are the various other items. The time-sensitive one is this uh, social. They have asked for RSVP by today. So senators, please 
respond to that in your email. And uh, there's an elegant social on uh, Wednesday, 5 to 6.30, and it's with all the honchos of this uh, leadership. There's 40 or so of them. And uh, this is a chance to understand uh, more. So please come on <laughs> Wednesday. Does anyone see anything else here? Uh, lots happening here, but it's, it should be, wow, what a day. Uh, any else, anyone wants to ask about? All right, thank you very much. See you in a month. Or sooner, it's coming very soon. All in favor, all in favor. Thank you. See you outside in the, in the uh, thanks to the bar. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I didn't say anything. How are you? Okay. All of it. All of it.